What's going on everybody? Today's video, what are we talking about? We're talking about N64 programming, but today's video, which is part three of my N64 programming primer series, we're gonna be checking out and we're gonna be diving into the spec file. So that's today's video and it should be awesome. So without further ado, let's get this video started. Here we go. So, a lot of you are probably saying, Jerry, what the heck is a spec file and what does it have to do with N64 development? So, the spec file in a nutshell is essentially a, a script file or a settings file that allowed developers, programmers, the ability to control where in the ROM memory space their compiled pieces of code were allocated. It provided the user a way to optimize how the game would perform. The spec file also allowed the developers to determine which piece of microcode was gonna be used, which is sort of like the firmware that's running on the console and how your source code is interpreted and run on the system. So you could have a, a cartridge that was 32 megabytes or 64 megabytes but you want to control where things are placed within that memory and you want to make sure that things don't overlap, well, the spec file allows the control to declare all of that and giving you control to optimize your game. So another important thing to realize about the N64 is that the system uses RDRAM during game execution. The N64 console is equipped with four megabytes of RDRAM and you can expand that up to eight megabytes if you're using an expansion pack. So now while the game is running, that's the memory that it has access to to process and run code. Regardless if your cartridge uses a 32 megabyte ROM or a 64 megabyte ROM, the way that the code is loaded is that it it has to extract that specific piece of code from ROM memory and load it into RAM before it can actually use and process that code. So this is the real advantage of the spec file where you have all your different pieces of compiled code with a specific segmented address and it allows you to take that specific block of code and load it into the working RDRAM memory. So that's what the N64 spec file is. And we're gonna hop over to my Windows 2000 PC and we're gonna open up a spec file and go through it line by line and just go give you guys an overview of how it all works. Okay, so we'll first navigate over to our NU system demos. So we're gonna go to the C drive and we'll navigate down to the NU system folder to the samples. And let's dive into the spec file for say NU3 because it's a little bit more exciting than the others. So we'll navigate here to the spec file and we'll go ahead and open that up in our IDE. Okay, so uh, this is what they look like. And the first thing you'll notice, uh, usually you'll have a little bit like a, a commented uh, header here that's just sort of a brief breakdown of the memory layout for the ROM and, uh, that's intended for this demo. Uh, but you don't have to worry about it too much because it is commented out, so it won't be executed as part of the spec file. Um, now, because we're running an NU system demo, you'll always see uh, this include file of the NU sys.h library. So it's always good to verify that you do have that. So next we have our first segment uh, definition that's laid out here. Now you'll notice that all of the segments, they also have the same format and they always begin with begin seg and they will finish with nseg. And so that's one segment block that we have. And within that, you have all of the different uh, segment definitions. And so in this case, we have, there's several, and uh, they're not all listed here, but there's quite a few of them here. We have name, uh, flags, entry, address, stack, include. This one here, this is the first segment block that we have as part of the spec file. That is usually your boot code and your boot code is the first segment that's actually run by the N64. That's the first thing that's executed when you turn on the system. And so in this case, we have, um, we have given it the name code. And now this becomes important later when you're actually writing your source code because you're gonna be able to reference this specific segment 
uh, based on this uh, name uh, definition that you've provided here. So now with the flags uh, definition, uh, we have boot and we have object. So boot is specifying that this is the boot code segment and object is specifying that we have object files as part of this uh, segment. So now you're also gonna see this entry nu boot segment definition. So essentially what entry is, is just defining that this is your boot uh, function that's gonna be run as part of your code. And when you're doing an nu system demo, you're always gonna to wanna to have that set to nu boot, which is actually tied to your main proc within your source code, but we'll be getting to that and we'll be talking about the main proc function within your source code and that'll be in a later video. Uh, but you just have to make sure that you specify that uh, when you're running an NU system demo. So now you're also gonna notice that we have address and stack segment definitions here. Now essentially what this is, address is just the address that you're allocating for the object files. As well, we have stack, which is the stack address of your boot code. Followed by this, we have a whole series of different include uh, definitions. Now, so essentially what we're doing here is we're including all of these object files within this one segment. And so because we're doing the boot segment here, you'll notice that we have included all of these different uh, microcode object files. So now these are these object files here, these are the microcode files that are included as part of the SDK and are, uh, were created by Nintendo. And each one of them has specific uh, functions and it's optimized to uh, process uh, code in a certain way. And that's uh, beneficial for whether you're doing uh, graphics, say with sprites, and you're doing 2D graphics, or if you're doing 3D graphics, or a combination of the two, or also if you're doing audio development. There are different microcode object files that you can use and specify to be included as part of your code. So it just depends on what you're working with, but you can include many as you can see here. Okay, so now we're moving down here to some of the other segments that we have. So now with the fact that we don't have any object files included in these segments, we've declared the flag segment definition as raw. And that's just specifying that we can include any kind of other file type other than uh, object files. So in this case, we have different uh, files that are part of uh, MIDI uh, development. So this in this demo, there's a lot of audio uh, that we're working with. And so we have different files that relate to that. And so we have this file here, which is Wave CTL. We have Wave TBL and a Wave SBK. It's like a sound bank as part of a MIDI uh, demo that you're working on. And again, each one has its own specific name uh, segment definition and uh, simply the include file. And that's about it. And so the last part of our spec file, we have this begin wave and end wave. And what we're doing here is we're actually combining all of the different segments that we've declared and we're combining them all into one and we're giving it a name segment definition of NU3. And from what I've read, this is actually used for debugging. So uh, it's always good to make sure that you have that in place as well. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring in, this is the spec file from one of the LibUltra demos and this is Chrome. Uh, demo and I'm actually going to bring in the source code file for this and it's just I wanted to show you guys how the name um, Segment definitions come comes into play here with your source code So you probably won't see it that much in the NU system demos But once you get further and you start playing around with the code and you maybe maybe you're playing around with some of the lib ultra demos you're actually going to see this so uh, you're going to see some declarations where we have, say, like for instance here, we have um, code segment end, uh, there's also static segment ROM start, static segment ROM end. So now if we look over at our spec file here, you'll notice all of our different segments that we have set up. Uh, each one of them has a specific uh, name segment definition. So for our first one, we have code, the second is Z buffers, uh, and then we have CFB, static, and so that's where it ties together the spec file uh, name segment definitions comes into play with your source code. And so when you'll see these specific variables being used and they happen to have a specific name that's tied to a specific segment uh, within your spec file, you'll know which one you're referencing. So it's just good to be aware of that. Okay, so one last thing that I wanna mention and that is if you do not declare a flags uh, segment definition, if you just remove that, 
it will actually be treated as a raw attribute anyhow. Just wanted to mention that before closing. Uh, it's a good thing to know. So that's today's video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully it gave you guys some insight as to what the spec file is and how it all works as part of your N64 ROM compilation process. So in the next video, we're probably gonna dive into some of the actual source code for the N64 demos. And we're gonna take a look at some of the matrix information and how we can manipulate some of the graphics that are on screen. So that should be cool and fun to check out and hopefully that will be something fun that you guys will enjoy. So as always guys, thanks so much for watching. Hit the like and subscribe if you guys can. It's always appreciated. And we'll see you in the next video. Take it easy. Ciao.